Welcome to Corporal's Corner. Today we're going to talk about an improvised fall restraint, so stick around. When dealing with rope bridges, whether that be a one rope bridge or a commando bridge, a two rope bridge called a postman's bridge or a three rope bridge referred to as a monkey bridge, you're going to want some sort of fall arrest system or fall protection. And a fall arrest system is nothing more than a system that's put in place to catch someone or stop someone who's already falling. Not to prevent you from falling, to stop you from continuing to fall. So today what I want to talk about is an improvised fall restraint, commonly referred to as a lanyard. For those of you involved in construction, you know that you have to have a harness on before you get inside of a man lift or a bucket. And on that harness, you usually have two lanyards with pelican clamps that you use at tie-out points. Go up, do your business, get back down, unclamp. So what we're trying to do is recreate the exact same thing. I'm going to show you two ways to do that. This rope right here, let's see, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen and change. This is extremely long for something like this. So what I'll do is I'll show you two ways to do this. One with the shorter rope, one with the longer rope. Taking your rope, all you're gonna do, once again, is you're gonna tie a bowline around your body. I've shown this several times. We'll walk through it again. Got a long end and a short end. What I'm gonna do right here, take my long end, I'm just gonna rotate it over and drop it straight down. I'm gonna reach inside and pull that through. There's a pocket right there. I'm taking my short end, I'm gonna pass it through that pocket. I don't want this extremely tight, but tight enough. Pass it through the pocket. I'm gonna pinch it right there, grab my long end, and pull it tight. And there's our bullen. Now taking my short end, just like before in my previous videos, I'm gonna tie a double overhand knot. And it forms that X. Pass my tail through that X and pull it tight. It's not too tight, I can breathe fine. It's not compressing anything, it's not rubbing anywhere but it will stay up here, around my chest, under my armpits, and my upper back. And for me, take my fist, if I can pass my fist through there, we're good to go. I can rotate this to the side if I want to, either side or keep it in the middle. Now it's time for part two. What I'm gonna do right here is I'm gonna take my hand, at one arm's length, we're gonna create a figure eight on a bite. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my long end and create a bite. There's one bite right there. I'm gonna get the approximate middle of that bite, drape it back down again. Here's one bite. Here's my second bite. Now taking my bite or my loop here, I'm gonna go around the front around the back, around the front again, and back up through that hole. And you can already see it's resembling a figure eight. And dress that up, just like that. Go ahead and grab my carabiner. And there's my improvised lanyard. And as far as excess goes, all I gotta do is if you're paranoid, take your end and you can tie your double overhand knot just like right here on your figure eight. Go around once. Again, makes an X. And take your excess. and pass it through that X. And 
And one rule of thumb I try to go by is, I went ahead and I adjusted this. Your loop on your figure eight, you don't want any smaller than what you're trying to pass through it, and you don't want it any larger than your fist. Now, to tie up all your loose ends, all you gotta do is take your rope, double it over. There's your loop. And just like last time, go ahead and put it under your armpits, the upper portion of your back, and around your chest. We're gonna have a short end and a long end. Now we're gonna go ahead and tie the exact same knot around the body bullion, and we're gonna finish it off with a double overhand knot. So just like before, Gonna rotate it over, drop it down, reach inside, pull it through. I'm taking both of my ends, I'm gonna pass those through, adjust it how tight I want it, go ahead and pinch them together, short end, long end. Pull it tight. And there's my bullion. So from this point, we'll finish it off here with a double overhand knot. And go around once, cross over, there's that X. Put my tails through that X. It's almost identical to last time. Got my fist. My fist can pass through. It's comfortable. It's not tight. I can breathe. Everything's good to go. Just like last time, I'm going to go ahead, get the length that I want it. I'm going to wrap it around the front once. Around the back. Come back up to the front. There's my figure eight. Go ahead and adjust it. Dress it up. Get my carabiner. You're good to go. Welcome back, that was outstanding. Let's go ahead and look at the big picture here. Should you choose to make a one rope bridge, a two rope bridge, or even a three rope bridge, it'd probably be in your best interest to have some sort of fall protection, or in this case, some sort of fall restraint established. Now, think about that. Either bridge you choose, if you fall, you're going to fall between one and four feet into the water below. Now, you're already going to be tired, you're going to have gear on, and if there's any sort of current pulling you, you're not going to want to fight that current. So how far would you actually be pulled if some sort of fall restraint was established? That's it. From here, reach up, grab your rope, pull yourself back to the bridge, grab onto that bridge, and then simply hand over hand, shuffle, or pulling yourself to your opposite side. In no way is this around the body bowling and lanyard meant to replace any sort of harness on any construction site or anywhere else the harness is required. Thank you for your comments, views, support. Thanks for watching. Get out in the woods, have some fun, and I'll catch you next time.